Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be answering a question from Larry. He goes, uh, can you do a video on preventing bubble algae and dealing with it? Now, I don't have any in 300, so I can't just kind of bring the camera over there and show you how to get it out of there. So I'm gonna do my best to talk about uh, how to prevent it from getting into your system in the first place but then move into some of the ways that you can deal with it if it is uh, popping up in your tank. So first things first, uh, I just wanna say thank you for all the support when it comes to these videos. You guys are doing great. Uh, a lot of comments, a lot of questions, a lot of thumbs up, a lot of uh, engagement, really good. And uh, it is showing to be positive for the algorithm. A lot of you guys are saying that my videos are now coming up on the feed and uh, yeah, all good things. And thanks for all the support on the website. Uh, I do wanna apologize uh, because I'm about close to 100 orders in the hole. Um, I have been moving through them relatively quickly, but uh, I'm, I'm just not keeping up. So I do apologize for any delay. Um, I'm gonna spend the majority of the weekend just pounding on orders and trying to get as much done as I possibly can uh, for shipping on Monday. So again, I, I do apologize. I'm doing my best. Uh, trust me on that one. So uh, when it comes to this uh, question, um, bubble algae. It's one of those things that a lot of us deal with. Uh, some, of, some of us are like, how the heck did I even get this stuff? It, it just showed up one day. How did it get in here? It's not like I just put it in the tank. What's going on? So uh, yeah, when it comes to bubble algae, the very first thing you wanna do and focus on is uh, preventing it in the first place. And you might be asking, how the heck do I prevent something that I have no idea uh, how it got into the system? Well, it all comes down to something I've talked about a thousand times on this channel, and that is quarantining. Uh, quarantining is probably the most important thing in the hobby. And I keep saying that, like when I talk about water levels and all sor sorts of parameters and stuff, I always talk about what's really, really important, important, important. Uh, quarantine, uh, believe it or not, is probably the most important thing when it comes to the hobby because it only takes one little parasite or one type of pest to go through or get through into your main display and you could lose everything, unfortunately. And bubble algae isn't one of those. It's not one of those things that are gonna destroy your tank, but it can make it look a little undesirable. But, uh, it, you know, it's not the end of the world if you have bubble algae. I just know that uh, a lot of you guys don't really realize what you're doing and you might be getting it and trying to figure out where it came from. So we're going to talk about that here. Anyways, so quarantining. Quarantine your coral, quarantine your fish. It's all kind of the same thing. The point is to uh, isolate whatever you plan on putting into your main display in a separate tank. Uh, either there's a coral, a coral quarantine or a fish quarantine with copper. The point is, is you want to be able to observe whatever that is for a period of time to see if anything pops up. And this goes for inverts, macroalgae, anything that's going to touch the tank ideally should be quarantined. It's just, it's just something that I go by. Now, a lot of us are impatient, a lot of us are new and don't really accept that concept and don't want to uh, accept the fact that it, it's something that we're going to have to do if we really want long-term success. So a lot of us tend to skip corners and, and skip steps. And is skipping corners a thing? I don't know, it is now anyways. Uh, and then we end up bypassing what we should be doing and then suffer the consequences later. So you need to quarantine, quarantine your coral. Uh, that's primarily where it's coming from because bubble algae spores will actually sit underneath a frag plug or in the base of uh, LPS corals like hammers and torches. They would actually be in the, the underside and all that kind of stuff. They'll stay in there. You might not see them, but they could, there could be spores or really small versions of the bubble algae, again, that you're not gonna see unless you give it time in quarantine to actually grow and reproduce and kind of show its face. So uh, quarantine your coral is the number one thing you can do to prevent it or prevent bubble algae from getting in your main display. Now, another thing is don't just take water. So if you're getting a fish from a buddy, uh, you, I mean, he might have bubble algae, he might not. Either way, don't just take the water from them and then dump that into your tank. So same thing if you're going to the pet store and you're getting inverts or whatever. Uh, try to put them through some fresh salt water before you uh, dump them into your tank because it just, uh, you know, you avoid the, the ability or the possibility that that spore of the bubble algae will be in the water column. So you just kind of, you know, get rid of that all together. Next thing here is, of course, clean and dip your coral, uh, kind of along with the first one, first tip here. Uh, my, my tips are definitely not in order today. But uh, so make sure you are uh, dipping and, of course, cleaning LPS with the, uh, um, well, Axel's doing something. I don't know what he's doing up there, running around like crazy. But cleaning the base of the LPS, making sure the bubble algae and all that stuff isn't there, but then you still got to put it in quarantine. So. Uh, moving on down here, uh, another thing you should do is use dry rock. Uh, you know, obviously if you're getting live rock from the ocean or live rock from a friend, uh, there's a good chance that the bubble algae will already be on that rock or, you know, other algaes or other pests or other things you just might not like. Now, of course, there is a trade-off. If you're using live rock from the ocean, you're going to get biodiversity that you wouldn't get otherwise. 
So you are trading off the biodiversity, but you are going to start with fresh dry rock that is pest free. You don't have any issues. And it, it's just kind of more ease, ease of mind. Again, words here, <laughs> but not my thing. You guys know words aren't my thing. But uh, it allows you to kind of feel better about the whole process in the tank. And he is doing something up there today. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep going, keep focusing. And uh, so using dry rock is probably your best uh, bet for avoiding any sources of pests and bubble allergies and all sorts of other allergies that might uh, pop up you know, uh, over the time. So using dry rock. Next thing here is again, don't use water from other systems. I already talked about that, not in the order. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much, when it come, pretty much it when it comes to prevention. Uh, if you think you can add anything to that list, feel free to put it in the comment section. Of course, I'm always missing things. So, uh, you know, go ahead and put that in the comment section. Now, moving on to removing it from your reef tank. Now I am going to plug one of my products because why not, right? Uh, but we'll talk about that here in a second. The first thing that I recommend people do if you have bubble algae is to get yourself some emerald crabs. Now, right now, inverts are pretty expensive, but get yourself a handful of larger emerald, cra emerald crabs and they'll pick at the bubble algae. Now, it's kind of a toss up because when you see an emerald crab eat bubble algae, he picks it up and he puts it in his mouth and then it explodes. Now, I'm assuming during that eating process that he is releasing spores into the tank, further spreading the stuff around. So. Yes, they do eat bubble algae, but I still feel that it's spreading around the tank. Same thing with some tangs. I have tangs uh, in the 300 uh, that I'm sure would be happy to eat bubble algae. I mean, they pick at every single thing they can. Um, I have uh, a tang in one of my old tanks. Uh, what was it? What was his name? JP's tank. He had bubble algae in that tank, and he had a yellow tang that picked at it all the time, and it wasn't really an issue. He didn't get rid of it 100%. But he did pick at it pretty often. So uh, consider, uh, you know, your tangs if you have them. You know, there's a good chance that they'll go ahead and probably pick at the bubble algae. But if they have other food sources like hair algae, or you're feeding them every day, they're probably not going to resort to picking at nooks and crannies of bubble algae. So just keep that in mind. So emerald crabs, certain tangs might probably might eat them. Other than that, I don't really know of any other fish that specifically targets bubble algae. If you do, feel free again to put that stuff in the comment section. Uh, I don't uh, claim to be a, a knower of all things, but uh, yeah, feel free to add that if you do. Uh, anything here, now we're gonna move on to the plug because why not, right? So uh, one thing that I have used in client tanks and a lot of people have purchased is the bubble algae removal tool. Now I offer two different versions of it. The second version just is a little bit bigger for those of you who have um, obese uh, bubble algae in your tanks. It's just gonna be easier to use, but either way, Using this tool allows you to get in there and uh, you start a siphon on the hose and you literally pick the bubble algae out. And then as you pick it, it might explode, but because you are having a siphon of water right there where you're picking, it actually just pulls all that stuff through down into a filter sock or into whatever you're using, depending on how much algae. I know that somebody posted a picture to me on Instagram showing a filter sock completely full of bubble algae because all they did is use the filter sock holder and drain all the bubble algae into there and then just kept dumping the water back into the tank and they did that for a couple hours and got an entire filter sock full of bubble algae. Uh, so consider doing that, manually removing it is definitely a good method, but I wouldn't go in there and just start popping them because you know, you know, yes, you pop them, they disappear, but again, those spores are gonna spread throughout the tank and then you're just gonna run into more bubble algae growing. So uh, yeah, manual removal is good if you're using a specific tool or a siphoning method to make sure that the spores again don't spread around. Uh, I think that's it. Yep, another thing you wanna do is clean power heads because if you notice, if you have bubble algae in your tank and this is something that I've seen in systems is uh, the bubble algae likes to be around power heads. For what reason? I don't know. It just seems like it concentrates on the back of the power head. Um, I don't know if it's because the flow pulls more nutrients through for the bubble algae to eat. I, I don't know. But it seems like power heads are pretty attractive to bubble algae. So just make sure you're cleaning them often to help get those out of there. And don't clean them in a tank. Remove them. Spray them down. I like to use the power washer. I think I'll do a video on that in the future, getting out there and cleaning my stuff with a power washer. It's a hell of a lot easier than vinegar and all that other stuff. So, uh, yeah. So let's go and move on to a couple don'ts when it comes to bubble algae. And we'll wrap this video up because we're getting close to the 10 minute mark. Um, so the first thing you don't want to do, as I mentioned a few times, is don't pop the bubble algae. Uh, again, spread spores. That stuff just keeps producing bubble algae, and you want to avoid that at all costs. Next thing here is don't drop your nutrients in an attempt to starve out the bubble algae because the rest of your tank will die before the bubble algae does. Trust me on that one. Uh, so dropping your nutrients super low to try to get rid of it is not beneficial. I think moving towards the manual removal method is your best bet as long as you're siphoning that stuff out. And of course, uh, you know, using emerald crabs and, and natural predators for the bubble algae. So other than that, guys, I think that's it. We're around the 10 minute mark. And uh, yeah, one take.
A lot of distractions, but one take, right? So anyways, guys, if you enjoy these videos, please give it a video a thumb up. Feel free to share it. Um, you know, if you feel like doing that, I don't know who shares videos. I don't share videos, but if you want to share them, I won't, I won't be mad at you. I know it tells me my analytics if it gets shared, so I appreciate that. Um, if you want to be part of one of these videos or you want your question answered in, the, in an upcoming video, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section and I will get to you, okay? Uh, thanks for all the support and I will see you later. Peace.